Hey, what is up, everybody? I'm here to give you number 28 of the Halloween movie review series. And in this one, I'm going to be covering It Follows. And this was a very interesting one. Um, I actually had kind of known what this movie was about because I remember seeing Trailers for it back in 2015. Um, but I thought this one was... Actually, seeing the movie was very interesting. It was very weird because a lot of this movie um, was interesting. It was an interesting concept. And ironically enough, this is a concept that I think if you gave to somebody to try to make it good, it would be shit. Because pretty much the concept is um, you have sex with somebody and um, this entity follows you until it kills you. It sounds weird, but, like, if I was trying to sell someone to watch this movie, I don't think I'd be able to do it. I would have to t pretty much, they would pretty much have to take my word for it, that it's a good movie. Uh, or, in my case, a great movie. Um, but I, this was an interesting concept. I think if, I'm surprised that this concept actually ended up working out in the end. Because it just kind of sounds goofy, um, the way it would be explained. But anyhow... So this movie um, was thought of by a uh, writer and director, David Robert Mitchell. And pretty much he got this idea because uh, he was having nightmares of uh, people following him. And he would have these bad dreams because of all the things that were go negative things that were going on in his life with his parents getting a divorce and everything. So he decided to start writing this film. He started writing it in 2011. And he was working on other projects doing this, so he didn't really finish the project. But he really wanted to finish this project. And another thing I had also found out is that when he actually was trying to explain to people what he was doing, he really couldn't because he really couldn't explain the concept behind this project. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. Uh, a quote says... Um, Michelle Re Mitchell realized that the concept he was working on was tough to describe and thus refused to discuss the plot when at asked what he was working on. Reasoning later, when you say it out loud, it sounds like the worst thing ever. So then the film was, um, you know, once the film finally took off, it was shot in, 2000 in 2013 in Detroit, Michigan. Um, he's even cited the works of George Romero and John Carpenter. And everybody knows Car John Carpenter. He pretty much created the Halloween franchise. So there's something for you right there. And um, the film's monster shot composition and overall aesth aesthetic uh, were influenced by the work of contemporary photographer Gregory Crutzen, uh director of photography. Mike um, Gulak said we're both big fans of still photographer um, Gregory Crutzen and David had sh had him in his look lock, look book for, from day one, and then that pretty much you know, um, and then pretty much it doesn't really go into any other uh, detail. Um, it was finally announced that the. Um, Film at the 2014 Canyes Film Festival on May 17th, 2004, that it was going to be released theoretically in France on February 4th, 2015, and in the United Kingdom on February 27th. Um, it was given a limited release in the United States on March 13th, and what and a wide screen on March 27th, and 1,200 theaters. The film also received a limited release on March 27th, 2015, in Canada by. Mongrel Media. So this movie has like um, 200 release days. And it wasn't, it wasn't out in theaters that long. Uh, the movie um, So the movie was, all, um, was produced by um, Rebecca Green, Laura D. Smith, um, David Kaplan, and Eric Womant um, Wom Womzio, I don't, Wom I don't know how to say his name. 
Um, the music was done by Dasterpiece. Um, it was edited by Julio C. Perez uh, the Fourth. Um, the company that produced this movie, uh, there's three of them, Northern Lights Films, Animal Kingdom, and Two Flints. It was distributed by Radius TWC. And the movie has a $2 million budget going into it, which is pretty damn impressive. So now that I've kind of gone through all that, let me actually start talking about uh, the film itself. So the movie actually starts off... Uh, my computer's going to die. Let me fix that. I, I don't know. I don't know why I struggle to plug my computer in when I'm not recording. No, I don't struggle when I am recording. But well, no, I don't struggle when I'm not recording. But when I am recording, I, it was a struggle. Um, but yeah, this movie starts off. Um, we see this woman. Um, who we find out. Um, we see this woman. Um, I hold on. I had the cast up a second ago. Um. We see this woman, um, Annie, and she's running away from somebody. But we don't really know who she's running away from. It doesn't really tell us. When everybody asks her what she's doing, um, nobody really, um, you know, she really doesn't tell anybody what's wrong. And then she goes, she drives to the beach. She tells her family she loves her. And she was talking like she was going to commit suicide. And then when we find her, we find her dead and her legs like banged, bent up and like bloody. I can't even, I can't even explain it. Like it's bent up and, um, it's like almost half off. It was actually a pretty damn good scene. And then, um, the movie itself kicks off. We meet the original, um, we meet the actual main character, Jay Height. And she's a college student who lives in, I believe, Detroit, um, I think it was Detroit. I just don't remember. I want to make sure I have it, my facts straight. Yep. And she's been dating a new, um, she has a new boyfriend and his name is, um, Hugh, and, um, she's been seeing him for a few weeks now, uh, they, they go on a date, and they play this game on the date, now I'm only saying this because, um, it becomes important very later on in this film, where they have to look at somebody and, um, the, um, they have to say, uh, you know, um, and, and they have to say, um, like somebody, uh, like for example, Hugh had to, uh, pick a person and say why, uh, and, uh, say, um, and, you know, uh, pick a person you wanted to trade lives with and say why. So, um, you know, they play that game and, um, Jay, it's Jay's turn to play. So she picks a person and Hugh, um, you know, uh, says, is it the, um, the girl in the flower dress? And she doesn't see anybody. So this freaks out you. So this makes him want to leave. And, uh, you know, um, the next day, her and her sister, um, Ella are talking about it, how this was a weird situation. They talk about whether or not, they ask whether or not they've had sex. So then later on, also we see some sort of figure uh, later on watching, um, Hugh and, um, Jay when they go on their date and they have sex in the car. Well, at first they were going to have it on the beach, but then she wasn't feeling comfortable with it. So they had it in the car. And then she talks about how, you know, when she was a kid, her mom used to make a big deal out of her not being able to date, bo uh, boys and go on dates and stuff. And then, um, um, Hugh knocks out um, Jay with uh, chlorophyll, and uh, when she wakes up, she's tied to a chair, and we think he's going to do something terrible to her, but he actually isn't. Um, 
he reveals that um, that something terrible is about to follow her, and it's going to take different forms, and this thing's not going to stop till it's dead. And if it kills Jay, it's going to go back and kills him. And the only way that Jay can pass it on is if she sleeps with somebody else. And this confuses Jay. And when um, and Jay at first obviously doesn't believe him. But then she sees some woman who's naked and following her. And, it's stalk and she's stalking her. But we don't necessarily know who it is. Um, so... Um, Later on, Jay tells the police about it. The police obviously don't believe her. Um, so later on, Jay... Obviously, we find out, too, that uh, Hugh pretty much um, faked his name and to, get the, um, to get the house. And, well, to get the house he was currently living at. And so they don't actually know his real name. So then... Um, um, Jay then... Um, you know, is in class the next day, and she sees an old woman um, in a um, hospital gown following her, and she tries to talk to her, but she doesn't respond. And she goes to tell her sister, Kayla, no, sorry, Ella, and Paul. And we also find out in this movie that her and Paul used to have a thing uh, that, you know, uh, Jay and Paul's first, they, they were both each other's first kiss, so they kind of played uh, up to that throughout the film. And uh, Ella and Paul go Jay, um, go Jay, making sure nothing happens. And as Paul and uh, Jay were reminiscing about the first kiss, somebody uh, breaks the window and tries to break into their house. And when Paul goes to look, he doesn't see anybody. So then when Jay goes to look, um, she sees this woman that's like... Act as if she's come out of the ocean. Uh, she's she only's got like one sock on, and this person act like this girl is acting like she's going after her. So this freaks Jay out. Um, she runs upstairs and locks the door. And Ella and um, Paul come up and um, tell her to open the door. So she does. And then her uh, the friend Kelly has also been in this film. She's kind of the kinky one of the group, I could, you could say. When she uh, when she gets asked to open the door, she does it, and we see this guy's right behind uh, Kelly. And uh, this causes Jay to run away again. And she um, takes off to the playground. Now, um, I think also to make note is only um, Jay can see this figure. Um, I get... The only reason I... Um, because they haven't, the only way you can get this is if you have sex with a person that has it. It's like having an HIV type thing. Um, so, um, yeah, that's pretty much what it was. So that's why they can't see it. So if Jay had sex with Paul, which is kind of a spoiler, um, then uh, he would be able to see the what uh, this figure. So. Um, you know, um, Jay runs away, and, uh, we see these two people in the car, and she hears, then they hear her freaking out, so then Jay sits down on the swing, and I kind of like this scene, because we had actually thought something was going to happen here, like someone was going to walk up and try to kill Jay, which I thought was going to happen. There was actually a scene where she was looking over all around when she was on the swing, and I thought, like, the figure was going to be, like, right next to her, but it didn't happen. So then her friends come up, and Jay wants to find Hugh, so that way he can tell her what the hell's going on. And, um, so Greg offers to take him there, but since, um, since she's faked, since he's faked his name, they go to his old house, and they try to find something, so that way they could find his real name. Uh, one of the walls breaks, causing, um, causing, um, and which... Was obviously supposed to be a jump scare, which didn't really scare me all that much, actually. There was one jump scare that scared me in this film, when uh, Jay was washing her face, and somebody, I think it was supposed to be the BN, throws a um, dodgeball at the window. I thought that was a great scene. And then, um, 
Paul finds a picture of Hugh and uh, Jay together at his old high school. So they go to his old high school. And I actually thought one of the BNs was going to be, like, one of the students was going to be. So it's what made this film so good is you actually, since this thing takes a different form, you actually don't know who this form, who this is going to be. So I thought that's also what they made this film so great as well. So then uh, they find out his real name. It's Jeff. Um... Uh, Jeff Redmond, and they go to his house. Jeff tells him um, that he had gotten this thing because he had had a one night stand with a girl who obviously had contained this thing, and he actually is still seeing this thing himself. And he even asked like a girl that was jogging if they see him too, and they say yes. So um, Jeff tells Jay to pass it on to somebody else. So then what happens is. Uh, Jay, uh, Greg is teaching uh, Jay how to shoot, um, and so that way she could be prepared for when this thing comes. And they're all having a fun time at the beach, and um, then the BN shows up, and the BN actually takes the form of Kelly, which I thought was actually really cool. And the BN pulls on Kelly's hair, um, and no, not Kelly. Jay's here trying to kill her. Uh, Paul tries to hit it with a wooden chair, and he does. And then the thing th tosses it like halfway across um, the beach, which was cool. And then they all run into the barn. Now Greg doesn't know about this because he's been taking a piss. So uh, the, he just thinks they're all freaking out. And Jay tries to kill this thing, but this thing just doesn't fucking die. And um, then. Um, the thing breaks right through, uh, the bone, and we see, like, a demon thing just, um, uh, pop right out, so this freaks, uh, Jay out, she runs away, the form's taking, a, the, the being's taking an, another form, and, um, then she drives away, and a truck pulls out, so this causes her to drive right into a cornfield, um, and then she gets taken to the hospital the next night, I like the scene where she wakes up because uh, you would actually thought the beam was going to come in there as well, but it didn't happen. And then uh, Jay has sex with uh, Greg to uh, so that way the to pass on this whatever this is. I don't really know what. I guess the creature. And a few days go by. They don't see this creature for a few days. So we start to qu Greg's starting to question whether this thing is real or not. And Jay hasn't come out of a room or anything. She's blockaded her door. She looks through all this thing day and night. And um, then we see what was supposed to have been Greg's mother. Who's, who the being has taken the form of. So uh, the thing breaks into Greg's house. Um, Jay tries to warn Greg. She goes in the house. And the thing murders Greg by having sex with him, I guess. And this freaks out Jay. She goes to the, uh, she drives to the beach just like, uh, um, just like, uh, Annie does in the beginning of the movie. And I actually thought the same scene was going to happen. Then Jay and Paul, you know, Paul wants to help. He wants, uh, her to pass on this thing to him, but he doesn't, she doesn't want to pass it. And he wants to know why he wasn't picked. And she doesn't want to pass it on to him because she doesn't want him to get hurt. So they go to the place where they had the first kiss. And they have this thing set up where Jay's going to go in the pool. And they're going to shoot the being into the pool. And it, I guess get it electrocuted. Doesn't work. The being pops out. And it takes the form of Jay's father. Which well, I like the scene. But it would have meant more if we had kind of known more about the father. But we really didn't. So the BN, though, is trying to throw, like, a bunch of TV sets right into the water and trying to electrocute Jay. Um, and Jay, since Jay's the only one that can see it, she has to point out where it is so Paul can shoot it. And eventually, um, Kelly gets hurt by this. Ayla throws a towel over it, and Paul shoots it in the head, and the, and the um, BN falls into the pool, and... Then Jay uh, tries to swim out, but the BN's got her by the legs. Paul's trying to shoot it, and if, 
since she's on the water, this is kind of was an intense scene because it wasn't sure if she was gonna he was gonna shoot Jay, and eventually he, he kills the being, and then later on, Paul and Jay have sex, and they realize the being hasn't been passed on, and they all have a big happy get together moment, um, and then the, the scene ends with Jay and Paul holding hands, and we see somebody walking behind them. And we were supposed to have questioned whether or not this was the being that was following them. And we don't know because the movie ends. I kind of like the ending. It was kind of like a twist ending. But it was kind of like one of those endings like, what happened? Did the th- uh, Was that the being or was that just some random guy walking behind him? Well, so I, was, I think it was the being. This being I don't think can be killed. Uh, but this movie is fantastic. Um, I think it's really good. Um... And I think I like that it's um, it has intensity. It's I, it has that mystique behind it. I I, I think this movie's really good. Um, if I had to rate this movie, I'm gonna rate it a eight point five. Just be, I know was gonna originally rate it an eight, but talking about this movie just really makes me love this movie because it's really good. Like I would totally recommend this movie. Um, and yeah, uh, and as for the way that. Uh, People have interpreted this movie a bunch of different ways. Um, I'm going to read this part that's in Wikipedia. It says, It Follows has sparked numerous interpretations from critics in regard to the source of it and the film's symbolism. Critics have interpreted the film as a parable about HIV slash AIDS, other sexual transmitted infections, and the social precipitations thereof, the sexual revolution, and primal anxieties about intimacy. Which was when I was watching this movie, you could kind of see where it has that elements in there because um, these are kind of the risks that you have to um, take when you go to have uh, sex with someone. So I kind of actually liked. I was kind of thinking about this, like this kind of reminds you. This is like getting HIV, pretty much. And when Mich- uh, Mitchell was asked about this, he stated, "I'm not personally that interested in where it comes from to me." It's dream logic in the sense that they're in a nightmare and you're in a nightmare that's no solving the nightmare, even if you try to solve it. Michelle said that while Jay opens herself up in danger through sex, sex is the one way in which she can free herself from that danger. We're all in here for a limited amount of time and we can't escape our morality, but love and sex are two ways in which we can, at least temporarily, push away death. Which I think is actually a great point by Mitchell. So I actually kind of like that too. As for the uh, movie itself. um, The movie um, in box office draws. um, uh, So I have to kind of go through it sporadically. Um, On March 3rd, 2015. uh, The movie made um, $163,400. $53 $53 in the United States and Canada in its opening weekend from four theaters and at an average of $40,863 per theater, making it the best limited opening from four film release in the United States and Canada in 2015. Uh, the, and and in, um, internationally, um, it made its debut in the United States, in the United Kingdom on February 27th, 2015, and it earned. Um, 371,142 pounds, which would be, in American money, uh, $573,290 on 190 screens for the number 8 position. The following week, the film dropped to the number 10 spot with a weekly gross of... Well, you don't really need to know that, but... And the, the film had a domestic gross of $8.9 million and an international gross of... 1.6 million for a worldwide total of 10.3 million. As of January um, 2016, the worldwide box office has reached 23 point has reached 20.3 million. So, you know, ov- obviously that's a great uh, box office draw. Like I said, it all has to do with budgeting. Since the movie only had a two million dollar budget, uh, a 20.6 million uh, box office draw is very good, and. Obviously, it has to do with because of when it was um, released and stuff as well. And ironically enough, a lot of the pe- a lot of the critics 
have given this positive reviews, um, which is actually really good. Some people call it the best horror film in years. They think that it's smart, original, and above all terrifying, which it is. I'd be fucking scared if something was taller. I would never have sex. I mean, because that's like the risk you you pretty much would have to risk having having sex. Um, but you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, a lot of the uh, some people said that the, like it lost its way in the end. It says somebody wrote uh, Peter Durbridge of Variety gave an overall positive review, saying started off strong before losing its way in the end. This stylish, suspenseful ch- chiller should. S- uh, significantly broaden Mitchell's audience without disappointing his early supporters in the slightest. Um, some so so pretty much this uh, this movie got all positive reviews. So um, that's really that's very good. Um, it holds a ninety percent overall approval rating and a rating average score of eight point two um, out of ten, which. I gave 8.5 out of 10, so I pretty much it was around that area. And as for a possible sequel, it says, Following the film's success, Radius TWC co-president Tom Quinn announced that the studio was looking into a possible sequel. Quinn has expressed the idea of flipping the concept of the first film around with Mackie Monroe's Jay or another protagonist going in down the chain to find the origin of it, which I think would be very interesting. I actually kind of want to see a sequel, um, because I think a sequel would be very good. And, yeah, now that I've done that, let me go over the cast of this film. So, Malcolm Monroy played Jamie Height, or J for short. Um, Keir Gilchrist played Paul Bowden. Daniel Zovada played uh, Greg Hannon. Uh, Jake Wary played Hugh or Jeff, du- uh, Jeff, I almost said Jeff Dunham, Jeff Wayne Redmond, uh, Olivia Lacarsi Le- Le- played, uh, Yara Davis, um, Lily, Sh- uh, Sipi played, uh, Kelly Height, who isn't very famous because you can't, she doesn't have a Wikipedia thing. Uh, Bailey Spry played Annie Marshall, Debbie Williams played Mrs. Height. Uh, she was in the film. She was the mother. You didn't really see her too much. Uh, Ruby Harris played Mrs. Raymond. You, didn't, you only saw her, like, for... You didn't really see her that much. Leslie Plutio played Mrs. Um, Hagen. Technically, she was in the film. She was the form. Ellie Boda played Mr. Height. Um, Ingrid Mortimer played Old Woman in Pajamas. I, she was one of the forms that um, the woman took. Alexis Spradlin, Spradlin played Girl in the Kitchen. Uh, Mike Lano played Giant Man. Um, Don Hallis played Old Naked Man because when they left the house, there was an Old Naked na- Man standing on the roof, which was pretty creepy. Charles Greener played Neighbor Boy. I don't know who that was. Um, uh, Aaron Stone played Girl in Courtyard. And Luke Hogson played Law High School... Lawson High School striped sweated boy. So, um, yeah. So that was all. The, that was the cast, and that's pretty much the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. I have one more video coming up, then I'm gonna go to bed, and hopefully I can get it to a. I hopefully I can get the next two reviews up. I still have to get. Um, I have to get. I have to do uh, three more Halloween movies um, before tomorrow is over, pretty much. So. Hopefully that can happen, but if it doesn't, oh well. Uh, But that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you later.